Hi, I'm Matt Hinkle with Box Alarm Training, and today we're going to talk about the time temperature curve. So familiarizing yourself with a time temperature curve, and more importantly, a modern fire time temp curve, can really help you plan out a more efficient fire attack. So the original time temp curve, a lot of us are familiar with that, and that came out around 1908, so it's been out a really long time, and it shows the stages of fire growth. Okay, so right now you're looking at the original time temp curve, and this is basically just showing that in the graph you've got temperature on one side and you have time coming across the bottom. So when the fire ignites, this point is the ignition of the fire, and it's pretty easy to tell that the fire is going to grow. It's going to increase in temperature as the fire uh, progresses or grow, goes through the stages of fire growth. So we have the incipient stage or the ignition incipient going up to growth. This would be fully developed. And at this point, basically, fuel, heat, and oxygen are balanced. So it's free burning. It's burning basically everything that's available fuel. It's burning at that time. Then it starts to fade off. And it fades off because the fuel starts to burn away. So it's not limited by the amount of oxygen. It's limited by the amount of fuel. So basically, when that fuel runs out, then we end up with the fire uh, being completely extinguished. So being able to look at a structure fire and being able to tell what stage of fire growth that, that structure is in is pretty difficult without a good bit of experience or training on smoke reading and looking at conditions pretty often. But understanding what can happen inside these phases is really important because firefighters can get in a really dangerous position in vent-limited conditions. So early fires were what's called fuel-limited conditions, which the fire is limited by the fuel that is there in the structure. Modern fires are limited by ventilation or air, and primarily that's because of two big factors. One is the new construction, uh, energy-efficient homes that are tightly sealed and not able to breathe as easily. And the second one's going to be the fuel that is a lot more readily available or produces a lot more heat energy than fuel from the past. So in a modern time temp curve, things look a little bit different. The fire starts about exactly the same, really. We have the incipient or the ignition stage right here, and, and the fire starts to develop. Well, because new products of combustion provide such a huge amount of heat energy, they can choke themselves out. So the fire is going to grow to a point um, right here at the top of this first curve, and then it's going to kind of lose its oxygen, and it's going to drop down to this lower level, which is basically because it's run out of oxygen or limited, um, it's vent limited. So the fire has plenty of fuel that's available. So right now there's fuel that's just sitting there waiting to burn, but it lacks the oxygen it needs to be free burning or burn really well. So usually this is when the fire department arrives in a vent limited situation. We're in this uh, section of the graph. And when we arrive, we open up a door or we break a window or something like that. If, if we're going into to perform ventilation operations, we just gave the fire a tremendous amount of oxygen and that's all it needed. It had plenty of fuel. So you get this really rapid increase in temperature um, because the fuel was already sitting there. All it needed was a uh, air to be able to move into that structure to start breathing and be able to uh, do more complete combustion. Once you go up to this point, you're really sitting at the original time temp curve. So this is back where fuel, heat, and oxygen are really balanced fairly well. And then as this dies off, fuel starts to go away again. But the key thing to remember is right here, that's where vent limited situations uh, occur. And that's where it's really dangerous for firefighters to operate because you'll get a very rapidly moving fire or a really uh, the growth rate of the fire could, can outrun the cooling capacity of a hand line uh, if you have selected the wrong hand line or if you have malfunctions or you get yourself in a bad situation, high winds, there's a lot of different things that can happen. But this is the point you really need to be uh, concerned about is a vent limited situation. So really older fires or legacy style fires are limited by the fuel that's available. So basically they lose their momentum when they lose fuel. Whereas a modern fuel or a modern fire is limited by ventilation or oxygen because they're fuel rich. They have plenty of fuel available. They're more limited by the amount of oxygen that's available to provide combustion. So understanding the time temp curve and more importantly, the risks that are associated with a vent limited fire are really important for today's structural firefighting and understanding how to develop tactics and strategies that go along with structural fire attack. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to see the future videos. You can also go to our Facebook page at Box Alarm Training on Facebook and probably our greatest resource is our website, which is www.boxalarmtraining.com. 
If you have questions that you would like to see answered, write them in the comments below and we'll try to get to those as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.